Right. And he started to speak to my heart, really about what my heart wanted. And it was one of those moments where I was like, man, God, that's good. Mm. Right. And then I was like, wait, hold <laughs> yeah. on, right. wait a minute. Yeah. Are you setting me up for a no? Are you trying to, yeah. trying to draw yeah. me in with your yeah. wisdom and whatnot because you're about to help me know? And he was like, I just want you to know that yeah. I know the need of your heart, mm. not just right. the words of your mouth. Right. My answer is going to meet the need of your heart mm. and what, what glorifies me most. And so I was like, okay. And I remember the, for the first time coming to a place where I was like, okay, if it doesn't happen, okay. Yeah. So in our house, at the top of our stairs, we have a prayer wall. As a family, we'll go and everyone will write stuff on the wall that they're praying for. And the, the whole idea conceptually around is that our, for our kids to see it, they ask for God, ask God for things, but He actually does answer, yes or no. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's quick, sometimes it's longer. And so this past year, I want to say that um, my daughter, before even math happened, before we went to school, math got on the prayer wall. Yeah. For, for the years. Math is hard. You know? So people are putting, all of our kids are putting stuff on the beginning of the year. Um, and every we try to every month at least to go back as a family, go back and let's see what God has answered, what he hasn't answered. So month after month, you know, my kids are erasing things. Oh, God answered that. Mm -hmm. Oh, this, you know, whatever. But this one child, math stayed on the wall. And mm -hmm. she was explaining, she's like, you know, I just want to really do well. Um, it's a really, you know, she's going through the whole thing. We're all pr praying for it. So the idea is when you come up the stairs, you'll see something to pray for. Mm -hmm. you go every time you're around, you pray, pick something to pray for. Yeah. So um, Christmas time comes and I'm like, surely she's going to take it off. She's doing well in the class. I'm, I'm thinking she's going to take it. She keeps it on the wall. So the, mm -hmm. it stays on from August to May. May, she takes the exam. We're at the end of the year getting ready we're about to put on stuff for summer. And she takes it off. She's like, I don't know what I made on my, um, on my final. But I'm going to take it off because I made it through. Mm -hmm. I have a good grade now. Yeah. I just feel like the Lord was talking to me, showed me a lot of things through the whole wow. thing. And she's saying this to all, my, all the kids, all the families. So she takes it off. Mm -hmm. And then, so I'm thinking God answered the prayer. And two weeks later, she gets the results from her test. Mm -hmm. She comes up to me. She's like, Mommy. Not only did I make an A on the exam, but it raised my grade. So it's like she's she's the one that knows her GPA. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Like, so she's like, not only so now that not only did I get a ninety four, like I now have a ninety five mm -hmm. in the class that I prayed for for the whole year. And she you just see her like like he was listening, mm -hmm. yeah. and you see her like just. It was not anything that I could have done yeah. differently. Mm -hmm. It was all her. It was all us praying for it, her mm -hmm. going back to the Lord saying, I'm still praying that I do well. And it was just really sweet because it was beyond my reach of helping her. And God showed up for her in a very real way in her world. It's essential for our kids to pray, um, to know that they have a, a um direct line to the Lord that doesn't have to come through um, their pastor or that like they can go before the Lord. And so we have to nurture that. And also we have to nurture this idea that it doesn't happen just before I pray to eat my food or like these certain, like it's all the time. And so the only way we can, we can nurture that is by encouraging it encouraging our kids to pray out loud for them not to be embarrassed. This is just you before the Lord. And we just happen to be witnesses. I tell my kids, like, we're just here. Like, you're talking to God, the creator of the universe, who knew you, who knows you, who will know what you will be before I will even know what you will be, who is sovereign, who is faithful. All these characteristics of God, like, that's who you're talking to. We're just here with you. And so we, in our home, encourage our kids to pray out loud, to pray for each other. And through the prayer wall, just that helps them to remember that even though I've asked for something, that Lord, you do answer. So I think sometimes we pray and we just think they go up there and I don't know if they 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 hit, they stick, they don't. But like God is actually listening. And so the prayer wall for us allows our kids to remember and be thankful that God does answer and that He is listening. And so that's just a visual for them, which hopefully will create a life of prayer and going before the Lord and petitioning their wants, their desires, but also praying for the wants and desires and needs of others as well. And so my question is, have you ever been in a situation where you've prayed for something, you didn't know how it was going to turn out, you had an idea of how it was going to turn out, but you had to wait? Mm -hmm. And you wondered, will God show up for me? Because I think there's power in mm. 
the yes. Mm -hmm. This was a yes for my daughter. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of power in the no, but we mm -hmm. still have to wait until we get the answer. Mm -hmm. I've been at the place of, of no. Um, when my mom was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, I um, I stood, I believe, I fasted, I did everything I knew to do, and I really believed that that God was going to give us a miracle. And um, in His sovereignty, He He said no, and I really, really, really struggled with that. Mm -hmm. um, I remember the oncologist when I asked him, I, you know, have you ever seen a miracle with pancreatic cancer? And he was Christian. He said, No, I haven't. And I remember kind of arrogantly saying, well, my mom's going to be the first, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, the Lord in his, his sovereignty, as I said, said no. But here's the end of the story. The thing that the Lord did with it is that because my mama was hospiced in my aunt's house in South Carolina, my uncle, who my aunt had been praying for for years and years and years, and I do mean years and years and years, he just always kind of said no. He'd always held God at 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 arm's length distance. And because my mama, I'll try to get through it, because she died with so much peace. Mm -hmm. She had peace in the passing. And in the midst of that, um, he came to Christ oh, wow. because of the way she died. Mm -hmm. And so though there was a, that was the no I never wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, you're always going to grieve your mom. Mm -hmm. But I know that that no led to a greater yes. That is, and, um, ooh, that's heavy. That's powerful. Because he's good and he's God. Mm -hmm. And even in the worst, he's making something beautiful. Yeah. So um, I love that our God meets us mm -hmm. in math class mm -hmm. and builds faith. Yeah. Um, and I love that God meets a broken hearted, you know, woman as I was who'd walked with Jesus mm -hmm. hardcore for 25 years. And he goes, here's in this, in this case, my mm -hmm. precious daughter. The answer is no, but hold on, because yeah. a greater yes is yeah. coming. Yeah. So that's kind of my waiting story. It's kind of a both and. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Both and. Yeah. Wow. That Thank is you for sharing. Mm. You're First, when you said there's, mm. you know, there's power in the yes, but there's power in the waiting. Mm. Um, I don't. I am. I'm weight deficient. Mm. Um, and so the there has been more power for me in the waiting than there has been. In the yes, it's in the waiting that I've begun to believe um, that he's a good God. Mm -hmm. I think everything go goes back to theodicy, that he's mm -hmm. a good God, period. Doesn't matter if we get what we pray for. It doesn't matter because we we can only experience time and space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We we don't yet see, as we'll see when, when we get to glory and there's no more veil and then he says, when we see Jesus, it'll be enough. We won't even ask him for anything else. We'll just throw our crowns like frisbees and say, holy, holy, holy. <laughs> but, um, but what began to change, because there was, I got so many weights mm. and I didn't get what I prayed for for so many years because I couldn't have handled it. Mm. And God, as a good father, knew where I was so broken and so, and so fearful. Mm -hmm. And so he didn't give me what I was asking for because I would have, I would have squandered it. I would have, it would have become an idol. And I don't know, maybe 20 years ago, um, I was reading in Mark chapter nine about the transfiguration. I'd read it, I don't know, a bazillion times before, heard it preached, seen it flannel graft, grew up in, mm -hmm. in conservative church. But for the first time, I was probably in my late 30s, for the first time I went, oh, Moses made it to the promised land. Because mm -hmm. it had always bugged the fire out of me oh, yeah. that he didn't make it. Mm -hmm. And he, mm -hmm. he hits the rock. I would have yeah. been hitting Israelites. You yeah. know, they were such stinkers. And so I never understood that he didn't make it in. We were, Allie and I said yesterday, we're just in Israel and when you're floating in the Dead Sea, you can see Mount Nebo. Mm -hmm. And I found myself floating in the Dead Sea going, he could see it. Mm -hmm. He could see, the promised land is right yeah. there. Forty years he'd been faithful that he doesn't get to go in the promised land. That always seemed as a human right. mm -hmm. punitive to me. Yet if we believe God at his word, he's a good God. He's always a good God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's never an unkind God. He's a holy God. Mm -hmm. He's a compassionate God. And, and when I saw, oh, golly, cheapers, 
He had not only made it into the promised land. Mount Transfiguration is probably Mount Hermon. You can see the Sea of Galilee. It's, it's the most scenic point mm -hmm. in Canaan. Mm -hmm. He not only made it in the promised land, he made it standing next to a glorified Jesus, to mm -hmm. a radiant Savior. And you go, we ask for stuff because we can't see that what he's always doing is mm -hmm. infinitely better yeah. than we could even ask for. And that can sound Pollyanna. Um, it's just putting on a happy facade, mm -hmm. not really having the joy in God's goodness. And I, I, man, I did that for decades because I thought I would hurt God's reputation yeah. <laughs> if oh, I showed disappointment. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, and somehow sully his sovereignty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd be like, oh, no, it's great. It's yeah. great. Yeah. You know, and it was a divorce hard for you. Oh, no, now I just have two daddies. Yeah. Yeah. I just couldn't. Mm -hmm. I was scared, yeah. really, really scared. And it took a long time for me to go, wow. Mm -hmm. No good thing will he withhold if we could ask Moses, mm -hmm. would you rather have gone to Canaan in your jar clay body with three million sweaty ingrates or mm -hmm. door number two, do you trust that our God is always good, That's right. even when we can't see it? Mm -hmm. And the first time in the promised land is next to a radiant Jesus, mm -hmm. he'd say, "I door number two, yeah. mm -hmm. rather have that. So I... I I'm a slow learner. It has mm -hmm. taken me so long to actually mm -hmm. believe, even if I have to wait yes. or I never get what I prayed for, what he has for me is better yeah. mm -hmm. than what I had the faith to pray for. I so often see the sovereignty of God as it relates to prayer um, in the long middle spaces between the, the desperate ask the intercession, the pleading, and then the fulfillment, whether that be a yes, a no, or a wait. Um, there was a, a moment in time where my husband and I were really desperate to have another child. And I remember kneeling over the bed of my older son as he was asleep and just like pouring out my heart. It was one of those kind of gut-wrenching moments of going, Father, we desperately want another child. And we went into a season after that prayer of secondary infertility for years. Uh, we think we even had a miscarriage during those intervening years. Uh, what is, is so interesting about God's timing is that round about the time that I hit 41, we would discover that I was pregnant naturally with no medical intervention. Now, that seems like the rah-rah, happy end of the story, but at 20 weeks, we discovered that my structure wasn't holding, and so I had emergency surgery. Uh, we were in real danger of losing the miracle. I had to go into bed rest for three months. Now, the end of my story is that Luke was born. We, we were able to see uh, faithfulness in that really embodied way, but it was a long, long journey. And it was a journey where I had to lean hard into the sovereignty of God. So don't rush the process and lean back into the sovereignty of God whenever you're in that waiting place. How would I encourage somebody who's um, maybe feels like your faith is waning because you've been waiting for so long on God to answer a prayer and it seems like he's not answering the prayer. I would encourage you to, to learn the posture of John, the disciple. Um, at the end of John's gospel, that's our fourth gospel, is this point in the gospel where you're supposed to say why you have the credibility to write one of those one of those books and usually writers would say here's the rabbi I've studied under or you know here's my my productivity here's what I've done as a disciple and John didn't do any of that he wrote that gospel late in his life most scholars say he was in his early 60s but when he got to the end and said here's what gives me the credibility he said I'm the one who leaned against Jesus when he was just a kid at the Last Supper, he was the youngest of the disciples at the Last Supper. He literally, he went and figured him, he's not being hyperbolic, he literally reclined against the chest of Christ. So he felt Jesus' chest kind of fall back when he exhaled, and he felt his chest fill when he inhaled. He leaned against Jesus. So 40-something years later, he says, let me tell you who I am. I'm the one who was held by Jesus. When you're in a waiting season, if I were you, because I've been there and I felt like I was running out of faith, I begin to just real simply ask God to give me the grace to lean more fully into His embrace. 
I thought, even if you don't answer my prayer or my question, I want your presence to be my content. I want your presence to be where I find my peace. And so I'd say as you're waiting, uh, change your posture and what it is to lean and to be held by the God who loves you more than you can even imagine. Somehow the better is really more of God. Absolutely. It's some revelation. Absolutely. If he if his if his intention is for us to know him, I I find throughout the, the characters in scripture and in my own life that that answer is always contingent on what will make me know him mm -hmm. best. And sometimes the yes does, but in the waiting, mm -hmm. yeah. in the no, mm -hmm. right. it's it's more of God. Like you right. know me more, you know me with greater depth. And so one of my go-to Psalms when I'm into that is, is Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined himself to me and heard my cry. And in this particular psalm, I mean, David had a lot going on. I don't know yeah, what he was yeah, crying yeah, about yeah. this particular time. <laughs> but when you read through the yeah. psalm, he drew me up from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure, put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise. Blessed is the man who puts their trust in the Lord, who makes the Lord his trust. And then he ends it basically mm -hmm. with a, a song, basically saying, many will know, you know, who you are because of me. And... I feel like this happens a lot in scripture and in our own lives that the prayer that God's answer even though some even though very often it is a specific answer to what we need yeah. I need this I need healing I need strength I need right. a math grade um underneath that whatever that answer is that that makes sense on earth is something divine where he's saying I yeah. I want but I still want you to see more of me right. and so I'm going to give you this mm -hmm. answer mm -hmm. because that's what's going to point to me right mm -hmm. he says I delivered Israel out of Egypt for my name's sake like mm -hmm. Whatever brought me the most glory, whatever yeah, revealed right. me in the way I wanted to be yeah. revealed to them. Sometimes it's deliverance and yeah. sometimes it's delay and sometimes it's wilderness. But when my husband and I wanted to have kids, you know, we read, it dawned on us seven years into planning a church. <laughs> we're like, oh, we need some kids. You know, mm -hmm. we were busy and getting older. And that was my prayer. Lord, I need to have kids. And this is how this is the plan. I'm already five years off plan. What are we doing? And uh, I remember just wanting that to work out and it not happening at a time. Every birthday, I was like, Lord, we still don't have kids. Yeah. I don't know that we were really trying, trying. It never became a go to the doctor. It wasn't anything. It just wasn't happening. Like I wanted stuff to just happen like it's supposed yeah. to happen. Yeah. And I remember probably my late 30s at some point, I remember having a moment in the car and I was like, God, I'm ready for us to have a family. Like, what, what's really going on? Why is this not happening? And there were a lot of different reasons um, that, that, that that wasn't happening. Now, in hindsight, and I just remember, I pulled my car over and I just started praying. I was like, Lord, I feel like I've been waiting on this mm -hmm. forever. What right. are you doing? And in the moment, God, in true fashion, um, instead of addressing what I was saying with my mouth, <laughs> he addressed the, the issue of my heart. And he started to bring to my remembrance, this is going to sound unrelated, a young woman who I was in the middle of discipling, and she was going through a crazy season. She was in some repetitive, destructive behavior. And just that week, she had called me when she was faced with a situation that she'd been faced with many times before. And I was like, oh, Lord, we're about to be here again. And she called me to say, oh, my gosh, this time I chose differently. Mm -hmm. Look what I did. And I remember feeling just this elation, like, yes, you're getting it, you know? And so in that moment in the car, as I was talking to God again about why he hadn't brought this family, he said, I want you to remember this moment this week. Mm -hmm. He said, that is what your heart wants. Right. He said, you don't want to give birth. Right. You don't have to change diapers. Yeah. He said, you, you want to influence. You want a mother. You want a boy. Right. And he started to speak to my heart, really about what my heart wanted. And it was one of those moments where I was like, Man, God, that's good. Mm. Right. But then I was like, wait, hold <laughs> yeah, on. Right. Wait a minute. Yeah. Are you setting me up for a no? Are you trying to, yeah. trying to draw yeah. me in with your yeah. wisdom and whatnot because you're about to yeah. tell me yeah. no? And he was like, I just want you to know that yeah. I know the need of your heart, mm. not just right. the words of your mouth. Right. My answer is going to meet the need of your heart mm. and what, what glorifies me most. And so I was like, okay. And I remember the, for the first time coming to a place where I was like, okay. If it doesn't happen, 
okay. Yeah. Yeah. And three weeks later, we started the adoption process mm -hmm. for my son. And I, that waiting period was so heavy for me. It was Psalm 40 coming to life because he did incline himself to me. You yes. know, he leaned toward yeah. me. And sometimes the quick answer doesn't give God room to incline. Oh, like you don't, right. you don't have the right. moment for him yeah. to lean in and yeah. comfort because mm -hmm. you got yeah. the answer. Got the so answer. in the waiting, he can like, let me lean That's in right. and then let me tell you about what you're asking versus That's what right. I know you need. Right. That's right. He did that. So I felt a closeness to him that I wouldn't have felt. Yeah. But then the perspective. Mm -hmm. So when my son came, he wasn't my idol. Mm -hmm. He was not my answered Amen. prayer. Amen. Sometimes the most dangerous thing you can have that's right. is this thing that's an answered prayer. That's right. God is like, I'm the answer to your prayer. Uh, that's, that's good. Right. And so I felt very grateful. I still feel very grateful yeah. Yeah. that the Lord saved my son from being my idol, you know, in that waiting. It is always possible that an answer to prayer can become an idol, as it is with anything. Like, anything can become an idol. Food, marriage, uh, a job, uh, wisdom, all the things. And the way anything stays in its proper place as something that isn't God is by recognizing and believing that it isn't God. And so I think you, it, it would be beneficial for us to be curious about what it is that this thing was created for. Everything has a purpose, right? And so if God has given me a child, God has not given me that child to worship, but to honor and to raise and to nurture. nurture. If God has given me a job, he has not given me that job as an answer to my prayer so that I could worship money or to worship wealth. He's given it to me to provide for me and so that I can be gener generous towards others. And so I think identifying the purpose of the thing that God has given you thus creates um, just a, a, a clarity on what it's supposed to be used for in your life, which is always, almost never to worship it, but to use it for God's glory. So I say, you know, in those moments when it's really hard, in the waiting, God is doing a couple of things. He's leaning in mm -hmm. in a way that, that we don't receive it when we have the answer. He's reordering priorities. And he is setting our hearts up to receive well whatever yeah. he's going to give. Yes. I've, I've been in conversations with people this week about how there's something I've been praying to the Lord about and he's not doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> and I was literally just yeah. telling somebody, like, it's irking me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, the person I was talking to told a story about how um, there are very accomplished, talented, able, capable person, but the Lord has them like doing like lower than what they're actually capable of doing. And she was telling me how she's been waiting on the Lord to just give her the next steps of where she can go and how she can serve in a different way circumstance. And she was like, but I'm seeing that the Lord was trying to speak to me and say, you know, you're really good at being a go-getter. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have to challenge you when it comes to ambition. Mm -hmm. I don't have to challenge you when it comes to diligence. I don't have to mm -hmm. challenge you about working hard. Mm -hmm. I do have to challenge you about waiting. Mm -hmm. And she was like, and I think that applies to you mm -hmm. talking to me. Mm -hmm. and I was like, you right. Because it feels, it feels like, okay, what do you want me to do? Like, is yeah, there something, something I need I to do. hustle? Right. Yeah. Is there some conversations right. I need to have? Is there some strategies I need to? Right. And so if some of the waiting is also exposing my, how do I say it? How much of a busy body I can yeah. be mm -hmm. and not knowing how to just rest. Mm -hmm. It feels like the answer really is dependent on my hustle mm -hmm. and my ambition mm -hmm. and not actually God's kindness. Yeah. And so... I don't even have a, a button to put on that because right. it's in process, it's process. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah. just, yeah. that's why this right. is complicated. Yeah, It's funny because I remember, well, you know, for me, my pride came from what I accomplished. Um, I went to school, I have a degree, I had a job, and then I got married and like everything went away mm -hmm. because it, all of that had to go away because I had to follow what his career was. Mm -hmm. And so for 16 years, we just moved places. We had a lot of kids. And I remember washing the dishes, literally. I've told this story before. And I remember like, 
God, I have a degree. Mm -hmm. Like I have prayed for stuff that I wanted to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have just like sidelined me to do, be with these people singing Wheels on the Bus goes round and round mm -hmm. all day. And I'm watching, you know, like this is not what you intended, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so again, through some child show, mm. it was about David. Mm. And they focused on David being a shepherd. Yeah. Mm. Just yeah. a shepherd. Mm -hmm. yeah. And his brothers were out doing the fun stuff. Mm. Yeah. And he was just out killing bears and lions mm -hmm. and protecting the sheep yeah. Yeah. and learning what God was telling him to do in that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was the first time I recognized that when he didn't do the shepherding piece, first of all, the fact that God used shepherds in general, like yeah. to prepare yeah. people to yeah. lead his people. Yeah. But if he wasn't doing that, it wouldn't have prepared him for his meeting with Goliath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, God, I am waiting. I'm in a waiting period. It doesn't feel like it's recognized, mm -hmm. that I'm seen, right. mm -hmm. that it's worth anything, but I'm going to do this well. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I'm going to lean on you because I, I don't know what's next. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's what I've been praying for. Maybe it's not. Mm -hmm. But right now, you have me here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that changed a lot of things mm -hmm. for me. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he's always doing he's something he's still in the waiting. Doing something. Doing. So yeah. I think yeah. practically, it's like, I wish somebody had told me practically yeah. what that looks like to wait yeah. well. I wish I had the magic formula of one plus one equals two. Like if you do this, your waiting will be beautiful. Um, unfortunately, I don't. But I will say, um, the Bible talks about us going through trials. The, the Bible talks about, you know, someone asking a prayer in God, like waiting years, hundreds of years before you go to rescuing people or years before people, you know, see the fruit of their prayer. And so all I can say is in the time where you're waiting, um, remember his faithfulness. I do believe there's times where we're put in situations and if we look back, there are probably some things in our life that, is prepared, that has prepared us for where we are, prepared you for where you are. So look back and remember God's faithfulness. Um, while you're waiting, be praying for someone else. Sometimes it takes us to get the focus off of our own issue, our own trial, and go serve someone. And then you understand what it's you're taking on praying for someone else. And I just think it's this idea of being in community. It's idea of praying for other people and other people praying for you because we just don't know how long God is going to take. And unfortunately, I wish I could tell you because I could probably use some of it to know that, you know what, Kirsten, you're only going to wait for a year. You can make it a year, right? I don't know that, but I do know that in that he is teaching you something. And I do know that he does not waste anything. So whatever you're going through in the wait, um, know that it will be used for the kingdom later on. I wish I heard more sermons growing up on how Paul, it was at least two mm -hmm. up to eight years from when he was blinded to the road to Damascus. We think all of a sudden you just started doing mission trips mm -hmm. and writing the New mm -hmm. Testament. It's like, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He was alone with God. He was in the oven cooking. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about the 30 years between Goliath. Mm -hmm. He could have usurped Saul's right. authority mm -hmm. right there. He became a folk here. 30 years on the backside of, of right. hiding in caves right. Right. between the anointing and the appointing. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't talk about, you know, Peter, mm -hmm. 5,000 people get saved. Mm -hmm. Then there's, was it eight years? Before that, and Cornelius' salvation. And he's thinking, oh, the whole world's mm -hmm. gonna know Jesus. No, wow. mm -hmm. no salvation's outside of Jerusalem. It's not until Cornelius that he actually begins to see the gospel go into mm -hmm. Samaria and the uttermost parts of the world. I didn't hear sermons about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I heard you get saved, but you mm -hmm. you're yeah. shot out of a cannon. Right. Mm -hmm. And and there were a lot of things I tried to do as a young believer. And I'm not saying God can't use you as a brand new baby believer, but I needed maturity. Yes. I needed to stack chairs at the back of church. And I don't mean to sound like some old curmudgeon, but nowadays you get popular in social media and boom, you're an influencer and you write a book. And I'm like, baby, how long were you in the oven? Mm -hmm. You know, it might've been good for you to spend a little time in the desert waiting mm -hmm. the 
best, the most intimate times that I've had with the Lord was when I got no. Mm -hmm. I didn't get, and I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I lost an adoption. My heart just, Mm -hmm. anytime you talk about adoption, Mm -hmm. because I don't deserve to be my kid's mother. Mm -hmm. Her first mama had to die for me to be written into her story. Mm -hmm. Just yesterday, flying home, Mm -hmm. Missy said, Mama, I really wish I knew Marie, Mm -hmm. first mama. Mm -hmm. And I said, I do too, baby. Mm -hmm. And she goes, does it hurt your feelings when I call her Mama Marie? And I said, no. Mm -hmm. Baby, she's your first mama. Mm -hmm. I said, she loved you. She didn't want to die. Helps me to not always be number one Mm -hmm. with my daughter. Mm -hmm. It helps me to go, no, love her. You love her hard. She loves you so much. But sometimes I sense Holy Spirit going, that little twinge you get when Missy basically says, Mm -hmm. you're not my first. Mm -hmm. (laughs) God is your creator, redeemer, and you think something else will give you wholeness. Mm -hmm. You thought becoming a mama and getting a baby. I don't know why I had an adoption fall through four days before I was going to bring the baby home, and it gutted me. Devastation. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, my prayers changed, Mm -hmm. and it became less about why Mm -hmm. than it became hold me. Mm -hmm. Hold me in the dark because I can't peel myself up off the floor Mm -hmm. without you. And I, he was so kind to kind of shift me from thinking I'll have peace and wholeness if I can be somebody's mama Instead of, I've got to learn how to be his daughter. Come on. Yeah. I've got to learn how yeah. he's my hope. He's yeah. Missy at my hope. Yeah. Boy, she's, other than the salvation, greatest gift in my life. Uh-huh. She's not my hope. She's not my peace. Uh-huh. She's not my fulfillment. She is not my contentment. Jesus is. Uh-huh. And I, I had to change what I was praying for so I could pray for him uh-huh. and his presence instead of praying for him to give me things. Uh-huh or even people. Where I really begin to see God shift the posture of my heart and even renew my mind in prayer was when I uh, stopped making about one performing. So I stopped praying prayers that I thought would impress other people or impress God. I know as crazy as that sounds, I would try to pray prayers that were appropriate. When I just began sharing my heart with God, and not trying to edit it first, that shifted everything. And then when it became less about me asking God for things, which I still do, I pray about my daughter's health, I pray about peace, I pray for him to quiet my anxiety. I I ask him for things all the time. But when prayer became more of, I just wanna be with him, God is the most important relationship in my life. He's, He's my first love. He is my hope, he's my peace, he's everything to me. When prayer began to be more about communing with God, leaning into His presence, everything shifted. I stopped asking why so much. I stopped asking for so much. And His presence became the answer. Even if I couldn't articulate that, His presence became the answer that my heart was really asking for. Our soul satisfaction has to be reoriented yeah. often. Because some things you think, I mean, you know in your head, God satisfies. He's he really what my soul wants. But like, God, I want you plus. <laughs> Could you right. also right. take care of these other things? My son, who is 10, is eating at adult quantities. You know, <laughs> if, you, if you have boys, I say, just wait. Your grocery bill, those three girls going to equal that one boy. Just, just. So he eats and he inhales because he's just always hungry. And so he will get a medium pizza and he will kill that whole pizza and so now we have this thing where i'm like you get two pieces you gotta wait 15 minutes you know because he just will inhale the thing Mm -hmm. and so uh last week he was eating eating his pizza he and then he said okay i'm gonna go outside i'm gonna go do something so he came back how long has it been five minutes (laughs) he was just sitting there he was sitting there and he tried to clean up a little bit clean up a little bit and then finally the time passed i said you can have your third piece and then he bit into it y'all he said oh it's so good. <laughs> it, it, it don't taste like the first two. Mm-mm. That's so, that's, I, I had to wait, wait on this one. This, I said, yeah, you yeah. did, didn't yeah. you? And so there's, that's so when good. he said that, I said, there's, you know, when you're just hungry, trying to meet a need, yeah. Yeah. even a good thing just, doesn't, it, doesn't just even, it doesn't even feel good. It don't good. hit your yeah. taste buds. It just yeah, yeah, went yeah. straight to right. your stomach. Yeah. And so yeah. 
it's kind of, I do think, you know, in a lot of our stories and in what God is, you know, unfolding in us, this is a question the Lord has been raising in me. Even the word waiting, he's like, what are you waiting on? Mm-hmm. Like, what are you actually waiting on? Because just because I haven't revealed something or done something, are you really waiting on that, Jada? Or are you hoping for it, maybe expecting it, but waiting? There's no, there's no stopping in what you're doing right now. There's no, nothing's on hold. So even some language he's beginning to shift in me because I'm like, I don't want to be waiting on it. What if you call me home today? Yeah. And he's like, it's done, whatever. You don't even know when my, right, yeah. my work is done right. for you. And so this idea of really asking God, like increase, increase my satisfaction yes. in you. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when you do that, well, often for me, that is when that waiting shows up because it's over that, that, that time of not having that instant satisfaction, which Mm -hmm. God is more than able and capable of doing that. I start to appreciate more Mm -hmm. when I have glimpses of him moments with him, even in the prayer, what God has done in me, like when my, like I was talking about with my kid, by the time the prayer that I was praying gets answered, my want for it isn't even the same. That's right. And it's not because I don't right. love my son That's with right. everything, yeah. but he he he's not the linchpin to my happiness, right. right? Like he mm. what I wanted from his arrival in my life shifted mm-hmm. by the time he showed up on yeah. the scene. Mm-hmm. And it's very intentional, you know, that yeah. God knows what he's doing. He's like, I want you to want me, my will, more than everything. And I think we yeah. forget often we that did. Jesus himself had an unanswered prayer. Oh, yes. He was like, if you can remove this cup, yeah, it was unanswered. Place, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there was the, the deity in him knew what yeah. the answer yeah. was going to be, yeah. but right. the humanity yeah. still yeah. had to try. Had to try. Right? That's right. And so I think we're in good company yeah. <laughs> when yeah. God well, says, be cool, right mm-hmm. even in light of Jesus and God the Father and that perfect intimacy, if we begin to just try to change our paradigm mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. around waiting and see it as a gift instead of spiritual detention. Yeah. Right. It's actually a <laughs> gift. Right. Um, when you were talking, Jackie, earlier about busyness, Thomas Akempis from the mm-hmm. 1400s, he was a Dutch priest, but he says this, true quietness of the heart is gotten by resisting mm-hmm. our passions, mm-hmm. not obeying them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In other words, the gift is in the wait. Yeah, yeah. Practically, I think people have a hard time. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's one thing when you, when you make it to the other side and you're like, okay, I got the answer, whether it's yes or no. You're like, well, if that wait is over. Yeah. Normally you're starting something else that you're waiting for. But I do think we need that more sermons, mm-hmm. yeah. more talk, more scripture on waiting. And also what we're praying for. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'll use my kids as an example. It's, it's funny how they pray for things that they almost could have control over. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like... I could probably do this without the Lord, but I'm going to put it out there to the mm-hmm. God too. And I think we do that. Mm-hmm. We could do it, but we say, I'm going to mask mm-hmm. it in like this. Mm-hmm. God help me. And mm-hmm. it's like, but then what happens is it happens and you don't even thank him mm-hmm. because you thought you could do it yeah. by yourself yeah. anyway. Okay. So what about the wait? Like, I think we said that naturally we don't like to wait. Mm-hmm. But if we were okay with waiting, mm-hmm. What would we pray for? Would our prayer to the Lord look different Mm -hmm. if we were okay to your point saying there is beauty in the weight Mm -hmm. in the weight, like what I learn, how how I get closer to God, understanding God's sovereignty. Do you think you'd pray differently and what you'd pray for? I I think I'm in a tension of what needs to be articulated and said versus, Lord, you know. Yeah. You know, there are things that I want, mm-hmm. that I want to say. And there are some things where I'm like, I think I want it. I'm not even sure how I really feel about that. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you know, I think, I, I'm in this tension. I think what's in my mind, even before answering your question, is how we are being discipled into impatience mm-hmm. because we don't have to wait for anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We don't have, we don't even have to sit through commercials anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, it's like we live in a life where everything for the right. most yeah. part yeah. is yeah. very quick. Yeah. Right. And so I, I do think that the cultural kind of influences are probably like messing us up a bit. Yeah. I think to answer your question, I think simply put, we would pray bigger. Mm-hmm. You know, we would pray to the God of impossibility. We would like we would because if if 
if the view of God is that he really is big and great and amazing and that all things are for his glory, then there's a natural expectation that he's going to answer it if it glorifies him. Right. So I don't have to be like, ans like angsty. It's like, no, you, mm -hmm. you yeah. want glory. Right. Yeah. So let me chill because that's yeah. what you're going to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you was in the ground for three days, but you were going to raise. Right. I don't have to be vexed. Right. Wow, to pray big prayers even while we're waiting can be one of the most counterintuitive things because naturally you say, well, I'll just wait till God does the first thing before I do anything else. Um, but sometimes God is saying, even before I respond, even before my next step for you is clear, I still want you to engage with me. And God may be changing the direction of our prayer. He may be changing the focus of what, what we're asking for. And so waiting with expectation, knowing that God is going to respond, maybe not do what you've asked or in the way you've asked it, but that God is going to respond because he's faithful. He cannot help but be who he is. That, like understanding God's nature, is how we're able to then have enough faith to ask for bigger things, to be bolder, to dare to call heaven down, to partner with God, to do things that only the Holy Spirit can give us. One of the things that, that I really learned in a waiting season, I don't know if it might help somebody, is that the waiting time in Christ is never wasted time in Christ. And yeah. a lot of times in my waiting seasons, when I get when I get the answer, whatever that is, you know, whatever that fill in the blank is yeah. that you're asking the Lord for, what I realize is looking back on the wait, no matter how long it was, was there was a strength that he was building in me to support the answer. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. When I was a, a, a young dancer and it was the least of my ability, so I'm really, I'm, I'm clumsy and I was doing shows and I just devastated the ACL. I tore it on stage. They put me in a full leg cast. I wanted to be out of that thing in four weeks on the conservatory dancing. I go back into the doctor. They cut it off. They look at the leg. The nurse comes back in. They put another cast on it. Mm -hmm. Y'all got to realize like, I'm an actor. This is all I want to do. Musical theater. Let's go. I had to go back in that cast for another four to six weeks. Devastated. Finally got it off. And what's crazy to me is even when I did a show for two years in New York with all my physical oddities, the knee never gave way again. Mm. And the only reason the knee never gave oh, way again good. was the that's secondary so weight. Oh, right? yeah. So so <laughs> for me, yeah, I can yeah, tell you this, uh -huh. I can tell you uh -huh. this, that, that if he said yes exactly when we needed him to say yes, we might not have the knee to stand on mm. to support the answer. That's so good. So for me, uh, I'm, I'm in the same place of just like, I'm waiting on some things. Yeah. I don't have a lot of answers. But what I can go back to is yeah. to say, when it comes, however you want to do it, you're a sovereign God, okay. then build in me the thing I need, the root, yeah. the knee. Mm -hmm. Right. That's weird, but that's the right. knee to stand on yeah. it. And that's, yeah. how I, that's how I've kind of reoriented the way I think about mm. waiting. I've seen the waiting season build, strengthen me by first humbling me. Um, I think when you have to wait on God, it, it lowers you because you see that you're dependent, that you're not sovereign, that you're not strong enough, you're not big enough, you're not smart enough, you're not intuitive, intuitive, intuitive enough to accomplish every task or every goal. And so it's humbled me and put me at the face of God to say, you know what? You really are God and I'm really not. And so help me to trust you even in this. And so I think that's kind of the principle of Paul, where it's like, man, I've discovered a weakness, and yet in my weakness is when I'm made strong. You had a story early on that um, we, we pray with expectation and then we wait, but we're still praying with an expectation. Yeah. Anyone have any thoughts about that? Mm -hmm. I have thoughts, but it's I just hard. wanna know. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it's, it's hard for me because I'm, I'm realizing something about myself is, is that I'm not a hopeful person. Mm. Um, and I think some of that is trauma, you know, where it's like, oh, your daddy's gonna pick you up. Mm. He doesn't pick you up, mm -hmm. you know. Your friends are gonna come over for your birthday. They don't show up. Mm. And so I, I, I realize that I, I kind of go through life with very low expectations of everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think I've projected some of that onto God. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes it can feel like, 
if I hope in you mm-hmm. and you don't show up, mm-hmm. 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 that's going to hurt my feelings. Yeah. 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 So I would rather just, nah, mm-hmm. you know, and so I, I think it, it really does affect my ability to have faith because I don't have the degree of hope that is necessary to actually pray with expectations mm-hmm. sometimes. Mm-hmm. But then there's a really silly story that I have where it's like, no, like you can't. So we have a dog named December. He's a miniature mm-hmm. poodle. He got attacked by just an evil little dog. He tried to kill December, right? So it took December to the doctor, uh, crushed ribs, uh, punctured lungs, like all the things. And my husband was in Africa. He talked to the doctor when I was with her and he was like, is December going to have to get put down? And you know, when people talk, like they're not trying to give you the answer because they know the answer. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm sitting here like, is this lady telling me my dog is about to die? So I went home and I am weeping. And I'm like, I did not know I loved him this much, but I'm weeping and I was like, Lord, I want to pray for December, but I don't know if you'll respond or if you care. Mm-hmm. And so I just start looking up all these scriptures about what God mm-hmm. feels about animals mm-hmm. and the fact that he made them, yes. right? And that he's mindful of yes. them and that he feeds the sparrows. Yes. It's like, yeah, he does. We are greater, we're of greater worth than right. the sparrows, but that doesn't mean that they're yeah, not of worth right. anyway. Yeah, right. Right. And me knowing that God cared about animals gave me hope mm-hmm. to pray for December. Well, I was like, God, you see him. Yeah. And you care for him yeah. and you love him. So Save good. his life. And he is still alive. So that, that yeah. just a little yeah. small yeah. moment yeah. was yeah. like, no, like you need some scripture yeah. Yeah. to yeah. fuel 100%. your hope yeah. Absolutely. so yeah. that you can actually have expectation when you pray. And Jackie, where my heart went was, yeah, he cares for your dog. Mm-hmm. Care for you. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. He knows mm-hmm. my Good. baby's crying mm-hmm. over this poodle. She didn't even know she loved so much. <laughs> right, right. But he cared for you. Yeah. When yeah. Missy cries, mm-hmm. it, it grieves me. Yeah. He's for us, yeah. not against us. That's good. Mm-hmm. That and when so we good. think of him as a faraway, dispassionate God, we don't mm. pray with expectations mm-hmm. because we don't want to get our hopes, up. Get our hopes up. When we go, he's an up close father who yeah. says if a human daddy wouldn't give his kid a scorpion if he asked for a fish, yeah. mm-hmm. how much more yeah. will I give you? He is for us. Yeah. I Massive orphan spirit, Mm. hard time. My dad left us when I was little. I do the same thing. I spent years just putting my head down, trying to be a good girl Mm -hmm. because I don't want to bother God. Mm -hmm. To begin to go, I matter Mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. I matter. He said, my baby girl's brokenhearted over this doll. Mm -hmm. I, I, We've got to change our view Mm -hmm. and believe he's for us. He's Mm -hmm. perfectly holy. Mm-hmm. He's transcendent. We need to be on our face. We yeah. need to have confessional prayer, yeah. all that. But we also have to recognize we are his beloved kids. He's yeah. for us. That's good. Yeah. I think what I have heard is is sovereignty of the Lord, um, the faithfulness. These are the things that we have to remember and that scripture will bring us to them. I mean, even for your dog. He will bring us. Even for math. He, exactly. Yeah. Even for math. <laughs> and and pizza. And pizza. And all these things. Yeah. I just think it's just, it makes me smile and get so excited when I hear the stories, even in the sad ones, the, yeah. the ones yeah. where, you know, the, my heart is like breaking for you. It's like, but he is still for us. That's right. And he does not waste mm-hmm. the weight. Right. Mm-hmm. So let's pray. Mm-hmm. Lord Jesus, I just. I'm a little overcome by what seems in the world to wait, um, that you are still so good in it, Lord. So I pray for the woman who is listening today, who is waiting. I pray for us here today as we are waiting that we re-examine the wait, um, that we see you in the wait, that we are reminded of your faithfulness in the wait, that we are reminded of your sovereignty in the wait, that we are reminded of scripture in the wait. Lord, that in this wait, you are building us and rebuilding us for whatever, whatever the answer will be. So Lord, meet us where we need to be met, Lord. Show us what we need to see, eyes to to see and ears to hear and a mind to remember all that you have shown us, Lord. We thank you and we praise you in your son's precious name. Amen. 
Hi, everybody. I am Jada Edwards. I'm here with Allison Allen, and we are answering your questions here at Better Together Behind the Scenes. So we have a Facebook viewer, Cindy, asked this question. What should I do when I feel lost and need direction in my prayer life? Okay, well, I love the question because I think uh, what we do in the natural mm -hmm. is what we need to do in the spiritual. We need to stop mm. if we're lost. Yeah. And we need to ask. That's good. You know, I think of the scripture that says we're going to stand at the crossroads mm -hmm. and we're going to ask which way should we yeah. go. And so um, one of the things that I am often tempted to do when I'm lost mm -hmm. is to just spin mm -hmm. and to just keep turning left and right and hither and yither and yon. Mm -hmm. And so if I can just stop and be still, go to his word, mm -hmm. ask God for a scripture that will help me in whatever circumstance I am, call a friend, mm -hmm. say, will you pray with me? I think that'll help you get back on that, that main road mm. and toward your destination. So I would just say what we do in the natural uh, really has application in the spiritual mm -hmm. as well.